it's uh it's me and it's melissa and it's the voice of ignacio <laughs> rojas Ooh. ignacio how's it going mm. my dude how are you uh so tired <laughs> so tired mm. uh tired. that's why i'm not on camera right now and i'm gonna only be here for a, a little bit there's okay, something that i needed us. to talk about all right someone. go for it uh, yeah. a, no a, apparently ignacio has said that he has turned into a tomato um we that's can't d- see him yeah that's maybe just that's why he's yeah. a little bit shy that's right now we think that's true right. yeah there's no proof it's not true that we're not just talking to yeah, tomato yeah, boy uh, it's right, just yeah. hearsay <laughs> i think uh be. melissa wilkinson you're also yeah, here i am How also here yes I'm good. We keep talking about Ignacio being a tomato, and I have a, a red dress and red lipstick on, so I may be the most tomato of them all. Who am I to accuse? I'm, I'm currently bathed in, like, red light, but I have on a You're yellow wearing, shirt. There are yellow tomatoes. Very, we're, yeah, we're all very tomatoes. Man. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're yellowish. I don't think yeah. if it is straight up yellow, I think it will still have some red. I guess. I don't think I've yeah. seen a, a straight up yellow tomato. But also very fitting because uh, you look a bit closer to orange. And we'll, we'll be mm-hmm. talking about why it is fitting. Orange. I'm, I'm, it's, yeah. still, it's still a mystery. Like, I, I, yeah. you, you've yeah. not prepared us. You've not been like, no. I, I have this thing. You're just like, I have something to talk about. Yeah. And that was it. And I'm just like, okay, yeah. come on board. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, well, this week here on the show, we do have something special for you coming mm-hmm. up in a little bit. It is our annual Rotten Tomatoes movie predictions episode. I think this is what, like the third time we've done this? Yes. Now? Yeah. So this is exciting. Uh, we have all of our our predictions from last year, so we're going to eventually be going through all of those, seeing who won from last year. And then after that, we will be predicting the movie scores uh, for next year. For we, I, th- I think we have a list of 25. 25 movies. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll explain a little bit more of the rules and stuff like that once we get closer in uh to actually doing that but melissa yeah i saw a tv show that i really enjoyed this week Uh uh-huh i so i've i've uh, right yeah i i've been trying to catch up on all of the uh, catch up tomatoes <laughs> i've been trying to catch up on all of the dc comics like cw sh- shows oh nice and nice. stuff like that yeah and i am up to date on almost all of them i have one left that i've started i watched the pilot for which is star girl um, ah. which they they did one season of that on the cw and then they're moving that to hbo max if i'm not mistaken um but i watched all of the first season of superman and lois oh i, I still oh, haven't finished that one? season this is the new one yeah. i don't know how to pronounce his la, 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 la last name but tyler hocklin i believe is how you so say that, it yeah. or something like that yeah. he's the one that plays superman he was cast as superman in the super girl yeah tv show so he's made some appearances yeah, I think super girl season two good he, he yeah yeah um yeah. And and so now he's getting his own show. And let me tell you, holy shit, this show is good. Yeah, I'm I was glad to hear impressed. that. Yeah. So I- it, 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 it both Ignacio and M- 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 Melissa, when I mention a CW show. What what kind of things come to mind? Like, how does it look? How does it feel? How is the acting? Like what? What comes to mind? Uh, I think it's. I think sorry, a CW God. show is pretty competent, but maybe you can tell it doesn't have the highest production values. <laughs> maybe the sure. the sets are rather simplistic. I think back to Supernatural, 
which was a show that did not have a lot of colors to it, looked a bit dreary. Not that that didn't fit the tone of the show. Uh, and was in a series of motels and spooky forests. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ignacio, mm-hmm. do you have something else to? Uh, I think uh, I'm thinking mostly about, about the Flash. So, 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 sums it up. Yeah. No, the, I, I was the, thinking the, about the Flash. I was thinking about the Flash. How it is kind of like half. It is comedy. Half of it is so much blaming myself for what happened. And then other people having to tell me that it wasn't my right. fault. <laughs> and then by the end, <laughs> the solution. That's the uh, he something tries like that, to yeah. shoulder the entire responsibility. Every He's like, it's episode. all my fault. And they're like, no, every it's episode. not. Every episode, someone has to go, oh man, I messed up. It's all my fault. I'm so down. I'm going to go. And then someone else has to come in and say, hey, it's not your, it's not your fault. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're good. Oh, and it's whatever. And then by the end, it, it's, it ended up being. Uh, like the le- learning lesson is what helps them defeat the bad guy at the end of the show. Wow. At the end of the episode, and that's every single episode. You're not. I wrong. didn't know that the Flash was one of the shows that had a lesson at the end of every episode, like it's Full House. <laughs> I mean, it's not like it's not exactly as strict as like, and the moral yeah. of the story was this, but like it's, mm. it, it, yeah, it's, it's a superhero show. So yeah, it is about like doing the right thing and yeah. learning to be better and stuff like that. So yeah, there's, there's themes of stuff like that, but I would also add on CW shows, especially now with River de Jail also being on there, which is one of my Mm. favorite CW shows. It's hot garbage. I love it. Um, (laughs) it, Everyone is attractive. Ah! And everyone is just like... Right, I forgot to mention this. Yeah, they're in that like awkward like... They're obviously in their 20s, but they're probably playing teens that are like at the youngest like 17 uh mm-hmm. but then maybe like early tw- 20s and so it's it's that like weird age where you can't really tell exactly what <laughs> age everyone is but it, it's just like i know you're playing someone younger than you really should be and it's weird um <laughs> mm. but yeah it is this thing of like it's cable tv like it's not the prestige show that you might see on hbo or on netflix or something like that But they did something different with Superman and Lois. This is filmed in a completely different style than the rest of the different different aspect ratio shows. Yeah, yeah. It's a more cinematic aspect ratio, different lighting, different post production. Like this is I mean, maybe I don't think I've seen another CW show that has this level of production. Uh, value. I might nice. say that this is their first prestige show. No, Woo-hoo. I think bad, bad. Uh, is it bad girl? Bad, bad woman. Also, it was shot like that. Uh, I, would say. I don't remember the first season being like that, and I I just watched the second season too because that was the one I watched like right before before that, and I don't remember it. Like it's still re- like that one still reads to me like the standard like DC Comics no. CW shows. No, I, I would but, say uh, it is closer to the to how Superman and Lois is shot. Uh, first of all, it was the first one to do that different aspect ratio. Also, oh. I think that the tones that they use are very similar, and also it is it has a more of a serious tone, kind of like Superman and Lois. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I like this is the f- first one I n- noticed it on. Like I, I didn't read that woman like that at all. It still read t- t- chummy like it was the Flash or Arrow. Um, but yeah, this one just stood out and I was like, <laughs> I'm really impressed. Like, this looks great. Like, this looks like something that I would watch on Netflix or st- stuff l- l- like that. So 
if you are a fan of DC Comics or want a good like comic book show, maybe you tried the CW shows or you fell off of them and was 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 like, I don't know, they're not for, for me. Try this one at least because it's really good. Mm -hmm. I, I recommend I'm happy to hear it. this. So. I, I, yeah. I always like a Lois Lane whenever a Lois Lane is included. I'm happy to see a yep. Lois Lane thrive. <laughs> She's a big part of the S yeah. one, so yeah, definitely also very recommend well. it. <clears throat> I really like her character in Superman and Lois too. I think it it mm -hmm. is very well done. Uh, so you said that you caught up on all the CW shows. Yes. Does that include Legend? Yes, I am all caught up on that as well. Caught up as in you are watching the current season. Uh, well, all, all of the, the ones that are out on like Netflix okay. and, sh and streaming services and okay. stuff like that. So, so you're not yeah. watching the current season? No, not watching the current season that's coming out. I'm not up to date on all of the Flash Armageddon stuff that's happening. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just like just watched uh, the it, it was it was the. One where all the a a aliens came to, yeah. to Earth in Legends of Tomorrow and they had to go f find them. And there was the singing competition and uh, Rory is now a father uh, in multiple yeah. aspects. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that one was wild. Uh, remember the, the one it's, where... It's it... such a good show. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, the best example of how ridiculous it is is the episode where they play bowling. The whole episode oh, is about yeah. them bowling, but the twist is that they are bowling in this space, this it's bowling alley that's bowling. yeah, <gasps> but this uh, bowling alley that's floating in space, and it turns out that the bowling balls that they are using are actual planets, and they oh are bowling God. with planet Earth at one point. For I the love fate this. Of the Earth, yeah, yeah, yeah. This it's is good. like good. the end of a Melissa. Men in Black movie where they pull out yeah, and they, they tell you you're just one tiny speck in a whole giant galaxy. DC's yeah. Legends of Tomorrow is ridiculous because it's like Doctor Who meets Guardians of the Galaxy, and it is the like they just have basically no regard for like we're making a serious dramatic show <laughs> this is just like what happens if they go back in time and accidentally leave a furby it like back there like does that become <laughs> yeah. their god somehow and it just like the, the, they just do like this ridiculous stuff like that and it's just it's so much fun because of it yeah um, but yeah good stuff good, good stuff, stuff with that Ignacio, uh, yeah, what yeah. do you got, do you, my, 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 my dude? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still like tr <laughs> trying to figure out what it is, but I have no idea. You, you did mention you might be having surgery, real. Oh yeah, soon. That too. I don't know if you really want to mention no, that, but no, it's something. I'm just getting no surgery because that's very hard for me to breathe through my nose Aww. uh so so we're i'm mean, getting that fixed so that uh the surgery isn't that much i'm i think i'm in and out uh gotcha. don't even have to stay in the clinic but the for like a week or two weeks every hour i have to clean my nose i have to rinse it Ooh, and so yeah that means that i cannot really go out because I need to be in the bathroom every hour and also oh. make podcasting harder because I, ha uh, every hour I will have to leave. Yeah. Mm. I gotcha. So, I gotcha. That yeah. sucks. Yeah, it sucks. But, uh, I'd rather endure that, that, uh, I, I want to do that so that I can breathe better through my nose. Yeah. Uh, would, yeah. would be helpful. Yeah, it would be helpful. <laughs> Oxygen turns out very important. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Oxygen, important. Yeah. For all sorts of living, growing things, like humans and tomatoes. <laughs> and exactly. hybrids yeah. of the two. Yep. So what I wanted to talk about is okay. uh, 
TV show uh, that is very near and dear to Kyle's heart. Superman and Lois. <laughs> exactly. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Now, uh, now I know yeah, what this is. I, I told you okay. last uh, crossplay that was two weeks ago. I told you that I was gonna watch Evangelion. Yeah. And Neon Genesis Evangelion. I liked it so much. I watched all twenty six episodes in two days. Whoa. Like four, like two nights, like uh, four hour, five hour nights, and. Then after that, I of course watched the movies, the revealed movies, and now I'm I want to go back and watch it again. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, yeah it is so it's, good. It's not for the faint of heart, though. Like this is absolutely not one that I would recommend to like. Oh, what's this anime you speak of? Like, sh yeah. show me a good it. No, like that's it's not like a. Here's your first one of that. I also definitely recommend people like having watched um, like multiple mecha or, or at, at least have Ooh. seen a Gundam or something like that. And they know what the tropes are because this absolutely plays on all of that. Yeah, but I think so. that one of the strengths of Evangelion is that it, at, at first glance, it does seem like a mecha show, mm -hmm. but it is so much more than that. It is absolutely. way more about about the characters and the symbolism and uh, like the title says it is called evangelion because there are a lot of uh, religious symbolism in mm -hmm. the show and i i really liked it and that doesn't mean that i do not have a lot of problems with the show itself uh oh, it, for it, it's for ex so messy <laughs> it is so messy to the point that uh, one of the things that i do not like is how it feels like the characters at, at what at any given point could be i don't know in uh it could they could be happy or they could be mad or whatever it could be there could be a certain tone to the scene and then the next thing could be a different tone and there is no explanation as to why why they change or mm. there are a lot of things that they they do not explain very well as to why they're happening it just feels like they they happened because they wanted it to happen, but but there is no logical reason as to why it happened, or there is no explanation to why it happened. Yeah, uh, it's 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 a it's a good exploration of depression. Yeah, is what it is of just like that, like you yeah, but, like you watch that show and then like think about. Hideaki like you like you 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 think about him and just like man this guy was going through some stuff when he made this like he he but he put so much of his heart and his soul in that that it's just like this is incredible like I I don't even care that some of this stuff might not make perfect sense or it is like the metaphors don't match up exactly yeah. or all that. It's just this. It's it's so cool. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think that's one of the strengths of the show. How Yeah. He put himself not only to the main character, but every other character in there. You, you can see different aspects of, of what he would have been going through at that time. Yeah. But I also think that it also is a negative because you have a character like Shinji and I really did not like Shinji in the in the anime because you're kind of not it, supposed to yeah because he doesn't change at all uh, at all throughout the show until the end of the last episode and mm -hmm. throughout the whole series it feels like one second he is crying he's closing himself out and the next episode he is or even the next scene he is so full of himself because he is a pilot of an evangelion and he uh he can do it and whatever and it feels like he might learn a lesson or open himself up and then the next scene it's going straight back to him closing himself and it isn't until the last scene where he realizes uh, his lesson or his he changes, and I think that that's one of the things that I dislike the most is Shinji's journey throughout the series. And I think the yeah. rebuild movies do a 
much better job with Shinji, I think. Kisio, Kisio goes through the, okay, I, I'm here. No, I'm, I'm leaving town. No, I'm back here. No, I'm leaving <laughs> town again. No, I'm back here. No, I'm leaving town for a third time. Nobody but, wants uh, me. I'm terrible at this. Get yeah. the robot, Shinji. Come on, you're the only one that can do it. Yeah, I am the only one that can do it. I'm going to save everyone. <laughs> and, oh, and shit. This person fails, was very, then... <laughs> very injured. I'm going to leave yeah. town again. No, wait. I just realized that uh, I have friends here, so I'm, going, I'm coming back. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that being said, uh, Shinji, I, I think in, in the anime, is. He's whatever you can like him sometimes, you can dislike him sometimes, and overall I didn't like him that much. But I think mm. the the supporting cast, everyone that's around him, I really like them a lot. Uh and I think that that's one of the reasons that I do like the anime a lot. And <laughs> I like how much lore there is. I do not like how it feels like they are <laughs> They are making up shit as they go, and <laughs> they are making it up, but they do not explain it uh, at all. Like it feels like literally, yeah. literally, they would go, "Oh, it's the spear of wh- whoever." No, it isn't that. It's actually the spear of this whatever, uh, this other thing. I they haven't even mentioned either of those names before, but they, it's yeah, kind of like they they expect wild. you to know. What's, but yeah, what's so interesting? interesting is that story has had such a lasting impact like mm-hmm. they still ma- like besides all of the movies which the newest one came out like a handful of months ago yeah um but the one before that the third one was like 13 years ago i think it, it is almost 10 10 years yeah, yeah. like it, there, there's a huge gap in all all of that any even before these rebuild movies all they had was that show but Mm -hmm. they're still making all kinds of merchandise like you can get neon genesis sneakers and neon genesis Mm -hmm. uh coasters and bottle openers but it's Mm -hmm. all new stuff like it's not like we're 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 taking the old artwork from the show and somehow putting that or like reworking that onto a pillow or something. It's like they're making new artwork for like all of just these weird merchandise things like neon Genesis mac and cheese and yeah. stuff. It's just like it has such a lasting impact that it's it's. It's wild to see how how popular yeah uh, the, the and whole I think, thing has, has and been. I think one of the one of the reasons that it does have a lasting impact even now, funny enough, I think it is because they threw so much stuff in the anime and they really didn't explain it at all that mm-hmm. you you get hung up on what does this mean or what was the plan or what was going on that then later uh they will try to f- Feel out the gaps uh, yeah. as to what was going on, and I think I, I tweeted it out a, a bit, uh, like a couple of days ago. But I, I said that I want another reboot because the endings just keep getting better and better. The ending <laughs> of the anime was so rushed and uh, so unsatisfying to me. But then the end of the end of the Evangelion was way better for me. And then the end of the last movie was way better. And I think that uh, that's why I, why I said I want another yeah. one because I, I want a, an ending that is even better that's, and wilder. Such an interesting show. Yeah. Wild stuff. And also, I, I, oh. watched, I watched, like I said, the anime, the movies. And I feel like half of what I know came from that, and the other half was just YouTube videos of people Wait. explaining what, what happened. Yeah. Because there was a lot in there that I had no idea. Like, what was exactly the first impact? Who was Lilith? Who was Adam? Mm-hmm. Why did uh, the 13th Angel kid... Uh, he went to Lilith or Adam, but he thought was one of them but it ended up being that he realized that it was the other one and that is not explained very well at all in the show 
but I feel like now yeah. I, I understand it more. So stuff like that, uh, I think that that's one of the reasons that this show is or had such a great impact because you can have discussions like that as to what, was, what happened, what was the real meaning behind everything. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. And also Ooh, that one scene, that one <laughs> scene in, Evang in the end of Evangelion, the, when the human instrumentalization starts and this song yeah. just goes. It is such a good scene. I keep going back and watching it, and I, I have that song. I play that song uh, several times throughout the day in YouTube. It's, <laughs> it's a, a good, good song, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's sure. what I wanted to talk about. I didn't oh, have yes. anyone to talk Evangelion with. I'm glad you watched it, finally. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of my favorites. So good. Yeah. But... but that's what I came here for, so, uh, <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm tired, so. Yeah. We will um, let you rest then. Yeah. I, I'm leaving you guys. Uh, take good care. Good night. Sounds good. All right. Peace. Night, and Bye. Bye. All right. Melissa. Yeah. Do you have anything to add or mention before we get into, uh our rotten tomato stuff here no i i watched like four episodes of evangelion and couldn't wrap my head around it so i'm ready to talk <laughs> about 25 movies enough of evangelion uh yeah so uh now that we've done all of that how about we go into our break for housekeeping uh and Perfect. then we can do the rotten tomato stuff immediately after that we put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make, and yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots, and we'd love it if you would check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at The Whatnots, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash The Whatnots and we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you want to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. And we are back. A uh, big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters, especially those at the $5 tier. So thank you to Sam. We love you a Thanks, lot. We Sam. appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, cool things that's happening here at the Whatnots. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, we are recording our 100th episode of Crossplay. Uh, so we're super excited about that. It's going to be a little bit different from what we've normally done. We're not going to be really talking about news or what we've been playing or stuff like that. But we're just going to be hanging out, playing some games and celebrating and uh, just having a good time talking about our favorite games of all times, uh, stuff like that. So go check that out. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And then also uh, this weekend, we have started our holiday themed pitches on the review mm -hmm. show. Uh, the first one we are watching is Love Hard on Netflix. Uh, and it is, I think, a good one to start us out with. I watched it last night and I had a good yes. time. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, we will have a few more of those. And also, don't forget that we have our sixth year anniversary retrospective coming up uh, at the end of this month. We are finalizing dates and stuff like that. But that it will also be a big celebration. Uh, that will be on all of our podcast feeds. So no matter what one you do, it'll be out there uh, for you guys to ch check out. And last but not least, Hawkeye. 
We have yeah. been reacting to Hawkeye on the reactor core. Uh, so be sure to go check all of that stuff out. We just did episode three and episode four will be this next week. We're excited about that because there was a cameo Easter egg thing that we are very excited about in that one. Mm -hmm. We think we know who it is. It has to be him. Very promising. It has to be him. Yes. Uh, exciting Who's him stuff we're talking happening. about? You don't know. Go watch it. Could, could be anyone. Out. Maybe Howard the Duck is in this. Our you first live know. action Howard the Duck. <laughs> we just had him in G G G Guardians. But He's yeah, not that. live action, but like Earth level, real world. Uh, down just on Earth. walking around New York City as it is. Only alien what do you around. Mean, there's more of you people. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. So go check all of that out. That is our housekeeping for right now. But Melissa, we got our Rotten Tomato movie predictions to get into. Yes. So and all sorts of stuff here. Let's talk about this game. This is something that we started doing at the beginning of 2020. I think uh, it, when the first couple episodes that January, we decided to pick 20 something movies that were supposed to come out that year. And we predicted the Rotten Tomatoes score for them. The Rotten Tomatoes yeah. critic score. And at the end of the year, we were just going to see who was closest. It doesn't matter if you go above or go below, just closest in any direction. Uh, and then we checked in at the end of the year, at the first episode of December. And that's the episode every year going forward. Uh, this week, we will look back at the past year and the movie scores and predict the scores for next year along with a couple other special miscellaneous scores, like what movies will be scored higher than other ones, or what a box office might be, or the, the, what plot elements could happen. Indeed. Uh, I think it's also important to note that we do, like, December to December. So yes. it's technically, like, a little bit of 2021 into most of 2022. <laughs> Uh, but I think yeah. it works out uh, best for us to do it here at the start of December. So that means we are starting with the movies that are coming out in December. Once once we get yeah. to, to, to the ones that we'll be predicting, uh, we'll start with the ones that are coming out in December uh, in 2021, right here, right now. So mm. that is what we are doing. Doing. Now, Melissa, when we started this a couple years ago, three years ago, <laughs> you won. It was the beginning you of 2020. It was three yeah. episodes. This is our third episode. But you can't say three guess, so years two ago. years ago. <laughs> Almost two years ago. Yeah, uh, you won. You won. I did. You got the most. Uh, but this was also right in the middle of the pandemic. Right when the pandemic started is when yeah. most of it. Uh, was in there so a lot of the movies we had on that list got pushed uh, into yeah. the one that we're about to score <laughs> right now uh, quite a bit of them did and then uh, crazily enough some of those have even gotten pushed out of the ones that we're gonna do right yeah. now uh, which is kind of wild so man crazy stuff um but because you won, I yes. bought you a pizza. And so yep, that's what you... we've decided is on the line each <laughs> time we this, do this. These are the stakes for every bet, every game we have. You will Venmo the other party the cost of a pizza, which is yeah. approximately 8 to $12. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one. Good, good, good bet here. Uh, here, here, let me at least run down the list of movies uh, yeah. that we worked with last year. Let me read the days off. I won't say what we, well, do, should we just go into like, here's the list and here's what we predicted and then we look up the yeah. score do it that way or? Yeah, let's go through, uh, let's, let's clear out old business. Let's take a look at first all of the movies where we predicted scores last year, and that movie has come out since then. So, and then everything okay. else that hasn't come out yet, we'll, we'll talk about after. Um, actually, can, can we kind of fl 
flip that so we can just mention the uh-huh. ones we're not going to be talking about that okay, was on sure, our yeah. list and then 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 yeah we can, we can do that so uh i i have a list written down on my computer screen i'll be pulling it up on screen every now and then uh but of the ones that we predicted last year here are the ones that did not come out last year yeah 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 so we are pushing these into what will be our predictions for this next year Mm. we have death on the nile which was supposed to be out uh, december 17th 2020 uh after that we have the king's man which was supposed to be out february 12th uh we have tomb raider 2 which uh was supposed to be out march 19th Along with Morbius, which was supposed to be out that same day. What a big uh, day. Also, My dad's I, birthday. He could see either Tomb Raider 2 or Morbius. Thrilling choices for both? dad. Right. Right. There you go. Uh, on top of those, we also have Jurassic World Dominion, which was supposed mm. to be out June 11th. Top Gun Maverick, which was supposed to be out July 2nd. And last but not least, Uncharted, which was supposed to be out July 16th. All of those ones have gotten pushed into this year. So we'll say what our predictions were for for those when we get to the ones that we're predicting for this next year. But the first movie on our list uh that that we we have written down here that actually came out was wonder woman 1984 uh yes that was out on december it absolutely 25th. was uh, christmas so I, I think i yeah i said it was gonna be an 88 melissa uh, you said I... it was gonna be an 84 unoriginal yes yeah uh, so let's go ahead and look this one up. Wonder. And I want to say that I at least never look at a Rotten Tomato score. This is the only context right. in which I consult it. And I don't even do that personally. Kyle does it and then tells us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I am going to hit this button and bring it up here on screen so everyone can see it. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's see here. That's not what we want. We want this thing. Go to that. Go to that. Go to that. I'm going to go to. Here we go. I know what I think that messed up some of the things I was going to do later, but that's okay. Let's see if that worked now. Wonder Woman 1984. Got a 58 on the tomato meter. Okay. That's actually higher than I feared it would be. I I thought Wonder Woman 1984 was fun. (laughs) It's a mess, but it's fun. I thought it was going to be a lot better. And I think 58 is around where it should be, but maybe even still a little generous. Uh. I thought it was bad. <laughs> I thought it was real bad. So you got closest. Uh, yes. Since you were, since you predicted 84. So point yeah. to Melissa. And it's, one. it's one point. I feel like you have to re-explain all of the rules of the game for anyone who wasn't here last time. Yeah, yep. you don't get like the number of points you were closest by. Uh, you get one. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, I'm um, bringing this back up because the next one we have on our list is Soul from Pixar. I think right? It was just yes. Pixar, or was it Disney and Pixar? Pixar. Okay. Uh, Dude, uh, uh, Pixar, Disney, uh, Pixar. Uh, there with Disney, their friends released on Disney Plus Christmas Day. Yep. Uh, I predicted in eighty. For this, and Melissa, you predicted an 87. Uh-huh. I'm going to take a guess here and say you got the point on this one because this movie was great. This one was awesome. Very uh, sweet. I am 
pulling it up here in a sec and yep that is true soul got a 95 on the tomato meter nice certified fresh there we go we're updating all of our documents 95 all right there we go soul was good i liked that one a lot mm -hmm. fun um okay after that a movie that we predicted last year was supposed to come out june 11th but got delayed to november or, or yeah to like late november uh ghostbusters afterlife which just mm -hmm. came out uh like a yeah. week or two ago we haven't seen uh, it yet i don't know anything about it I've heard nothing but good things, though. I've I've heard That's that awesome. this is like this is how you do the like reboot sequel, the reboot school. I, I don't I don't know what the right word is with that. But I they, like reboot yeah, school. I've, I've heard. <laughs> it's, it's a reboot school. <laughs> it's a reboot. It's a sequel. It's a re re reboot school. But I've I've heard good, good things with this. I'm I'm happy. This is a movie that I felt very optimistic about. And uh, Ghostbusters is a uh, a long held favorite of mine. And I do look forward to seeing this. Yeah, I I d didn't think this one was going to do very well when we predicted it. I don't remember if we had seen the trailer. Uh, I think we had yet. I don't know, because I, I remember liking the trailer, but I scored this one lower. I, I predicted this one would be low. I said this was going to be a 69. Nice. Uh, uh, and Melissa, I said, you said 81. S still hedging my bets oh. a little bit, but optimistic. OK, I am pulling this one up here. This one got. A 63 on the tomato meter. Oh, Point to me. This is so that doesn't sound this is consistent one of those, with what you just told me. Well, he, here's the thing. This is the tomato meter, right? It's it, a 63 percent it on the tomato meter. However, it has a 95 on the. Wow. On the audience uh, score, 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 score there so people seem to really like it but i guess there's not enough scenes about them sitting around sipping tea and pondering the meaning of life and stuff like that it's just <laughs> good fun kyle this year you know? let's interview a film critic uh and find out how many tea <laughs> sipping scenes they really look for at the cinema <laughs> right yeah <laughs> oh man okay so that one got a 63 me finally on the board okay man when when we did this l l l last year we had a whole like five or six of them in a <laughs> row that <laughs> melissa got the point to and i was just like this is ridiculous when will i ever get one <laughs> mm. okay uh next no up time to die exactly no time to die. This movie was awesome. We yes. went to go see this. We have a reactor core spoiler cast up on it. Uh, we both rated this one pretty high. Melissa, you gave this one a 93. Mm -hmm. That's that's closer to what I now feel like it sh should be. Uh, I scored it pretty good good but i gave it an 81 so i was thinking maybe not as good as we hoped but still really mm -hmm. good here no time to die we got 84 on the tomato oh. meter and an audience score of 88 just fyi so melissa shooting a little bit high I, it's it's a 93 in my heart. This is a movie I was looking forward to so much. This was my shining light at, at the end of the tunnel of COVID. Uh, during quarantine, I would yeah. drive to my movie theater and just park and just look at it. 
and like see the sun faded no time to die poster with its original <laughs> april 2020 release date still printed on it and i'm like it's, soon soon james just be patient i'll, I'll be it's there that, it's that meme of wolverine from the animated <laughs> exactly! series, yes! series while he's looking at the p- picture and that just like that was me oh. <laughs> I have to like get in my car and drive to the movie theater to do it. Yeah. This is one that I I kind of agree more so with what you put, Melissa. I think this needs to be higher up. Uh, like yeah. a, a 93, a 95, maybe at the most. This was a great one. This mm. was a really, really good movie. But yeah, uh definitely a good one. Whether you're as high on it as we are or not. Uh, next let's see up. up next. Take it away, Melissa. A, a Quiet Place Part 2. Too Quiet, Too Place. Good one. Uh, a Quiet Place Part 2. Okay. I said this was going to be a 71. Uh, I said 74, so we won't we weren't that far off from each other. Yeah, we we were thinking about the same thing here. So let's see what this one got. Oh, man, we were both wrong. This got a 91 on the tomato meter and a 92 on the audience score. Congratulations. I I only lowballed that a little bit because. The first movie was so outstanding. I was I was thinking that perhaps it would overshadow curse. any attempts yeah. at a continuation. What did the I'm first good. one I'm, get? I'm very happy That's they were I able to pull that now. off. Yeah, what? I liked the first one. Please. What did the first but one But I don't know. It's, it's a pretty intense experience. I wasn't quite up for seeing the sequel. But now that I see that it's got such a, a high praise, I'll have to get around to that. The first one got... got, 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 got got a 96 on the tomato mm. meter so apparently both of these are freaking good yeah here you go i'm not a horror movie fan oh these these yeah. weren't on on yeah. my radar first one's really. very tense i definitely not for everybody yeah um but that means point goes to you on that one, Melissa, since you mm-hmm. had a 74 and I had a 71. <laughs> uh, but next up after that, here we go. We got our first Marvel movie of the bunch. Yeah. We got Black Widow. Mm hmm. Black Widow. I gave I... this a 90. Yeah. And I gave this one a 79. I thought this one... I mean, we all know it was a little too late. It mm. should have happened earlier. Um, but yeah, I, 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 this was a lot better than I was expecting. Let's put it that way. But I still don't think it was like, fun, like it's not up there on my list of like my favorites of all time. But it, no. this was good. This was really no, good. It was, it was a fun time. It was my first movie back in theaters. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so Black Widow, let's pull that one up. This one got. Oh, I nailed it. It got a 79 on Hooray! the dot. On the dot. Wow. Excellent. Uh, but it also did get a 91 for the audience score. So, Melissa, you might be a little bit more in tune with. Uh, that one i am audience i am the audience (laughs) uh 79 point to me next up godzilla versus kong dawn of justice whoever wins we lose (laughs) we both thought this was gonna be pretty bad uh me especially i thought this one I gave it a 33. Uh, <laughs> I, I was more down the middle. I gave it a 60, which is low for me. Right. Yeah. Let's see. Godzilla versus Kong 2021. I still have not seen this. Um, I've, I've heard 
decent things about the like one that came before this, right? Or the well, I've I've heard the Godzilla one was okay, and then I've heard Kong mm. Skull Island was pretty good, actually. Yeah, but I like Skull I, Island. I haven't really heard much. Um, so let's see what we got here. Godzilla versus Kong. We got a 75 on the tomato meter. Wow. And an audience score of 91. That, <laughs> that's Melissa. higher than I was expecting. People really liked this. Hmm. Yeah. 70? Hey. Our next movie is Spiral from the Book of Saw. Neither of us know anything about Saw. But I just thought it was interesting that we were getting a Saw spinoff uh, starring and I believe like co-written by Chris Rock. That combination yeah. intrigued me. So I wanted to throw it into our original list of uh, predictions. Yeah, the, the, this is one that caught my eye. Like I said, I'm not a big horror movie fan, but this seemed more like a detective film uh, mm. mixed in with some of that. I haven't seen it yet. I think my parents did, uh, but I think what? it's now available. Well, it was one of those things of like they were looking for horror movies. They were remember Saw. And then when I mentioned, oh, yeah, it had Chris Rock. They're like, oh, oh, yeah, C Chris Rock. We know he's acting again. Let's go watch that. OK, where do you think uh, he went? I, I'm I really surprised he... to learn that your parents will go for a horror movie. They they kind of like that stuff. To be honest, huh. um, my dad is a big Stephen King fan. OK, um, that'll do it. But yeah, my my mom is less picky. I think she just like, if you know, if my dad put something on, then she just sits there and watches it mm -hmm. with, with him. So it's anyways, folds laundry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh anyways spiral from the book of saw uh, i gave it an 88 i gave it a 66 and rotten tomatoes gave it a 37 oh a 37 this uh hmm. apparently didn't do so hot the uh, 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 audience score is a 75 oh yeah but uh, let's see, 37 on that one. That means point to me on that one. I did 66. We're tied so far. Tied so far. So far, so good. If neither of us win, each of us owes the other person a garlic bread. <laughs> no, well, I, not I an think... entire pizza. Hey, let me see one. How, how many did we have last year? We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 22, 23. We had 24 movies, so we could have tied. Uh, but then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them got bumped to the next one. So mm. there's at, so, so, someone will win unless okay. there's one that we both picked the same score for, which I think we avoid. It, like, if you yeah. pick one, someone else has to pick a different thing. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's um, keep going. Our next movie is F9, Fast and Furious 9. Yeah. Uh, I gave this one an 83. That's what I predicted. Uh, I gave it a 66 just because I know these movies are, are beloved and very popular, but I'm not sure how any of them have ever scored critically. That's a fair point. <laughs> yeah, they've they've kind of they've had their ups and downs, but yeah, they are now such a beloved franchise that I kind of jumped off the boat on a little too early. I've only seen mm. the first three. Th three so i need to go catch up on the haze uh because apparently f9 was supposed to be very 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 good that's what i heard yeah so tell me what its score is every time i get excited for you to tell me a number you're like in the middle of drinking a beer 
Are you drinking a Corona Fast and Furious style? A Corona. Yep. Oh, man, Indeed. you're part of La Familia. <laughs> oh, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fast and the Furious got a 59 on the tomato meter. Yeah. Uh, so, Melissa, you got that one. Point to Melissa. If Our next that. movie is Cruella. And I want to say I watched this movie earlier this week because I realized oh, okay. I, I wanted to see like at least a handful more of these movies before we played this game. And I'm like, Cruella is easy for me to act. This is right there in Disney Plus now. Cruella was really good. I, <laughs> I had a things. great time. Yeah. Yeah. I rated it um, a 68. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'd personally rate it higher than my initial estimation. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of the live action Disney stuff. I get why they're doing it. I don't think it's necessary, but sure, you know, business, you need money. This one's right. Uh, this one's not a remake the way the other ones are. It's more of That's a true real villain like side reimagined, story like version. recontextualized prequel yeah. sort of deal. Yeah. Uh, so I thought this one was going to do pretty bad. And I, I thought this one was going to do a 62. So we were. In the same range, yeah. but I thought a little more on the low end. Uh, Cruella, however, got a 74 on the tomato mm. meter. So that is another point, point to me to Melissa. 74. Perfect. Oh, all right. The next one is Venom. Let there be carnage. A movie I drove out to the drive in theater to see by myself and Kyle has not <laughs> seen and hasn't seen Venom. Not. The original Venom. Let there be Venom. Yeah. So I, I pulled up the original Venom thing. Yeah. Just for a little bit more context. Um the tomato meter on the original Venom movie was 30. My uh, smart home device started talking at, at me here. Oh. Um, yeah, it got a 30 on the tomato uh -huh. meter, uh, but an audience score of 81. Fair. So Venom let there be carnage. M Melissa, how did you predict this one would go? Uh, I, I was optimistic. I gave it an 83. Yeah, which is more along the lines of the audience score of the first one. Mm. Uh, I'm kind of in between. I didn't think it was going to do good. Um, and so I gave it a 64. So. Venom. Let there be carnage. Got a. 59 on the tomato meter. So point to me on that one. Yeah. But Melissa, you almost nailed it with the audience score. It got an 84. I feel that so, I went to see it. Yeah. I also feel 84. I'm happy to see that this is a sequel that practically doubled its uh, original tomato score. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Good, good for them. Good for them. Um, okay, next moving on. Up, next staying one. in the realms of superheroes and San Francisco, staying in a geographic realm as well, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Ten. Yeah. Legend of the Ten Rings. Um, I loved this one. This was a great movie. This was delightful. Awesome. Another drive-in awesome movie for me. Um, I had to go see this in theaters. I talked about my terrible experience getting to the theater to watch it. It was horrible, but watching this made everything better. It was so good. Uh, but I predicted this would get an 88. Melissa, you predicted an 84. I'm not sure why. Why 84? I don't remember my mindset. It's to me, my mindset was it was a character that we don't really know yet. Uh, it's kind of coming after the big like infinity saga. So I just I, yeah. I, f I feel like it was maybe not going to do as well because of 
Marvel fatigue or superhero mm-hmm. fatigue or stuff like that. But who knows? Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings got a 92 Excellent. on the tomato That's meter. Good a. for them. And then 98 on the audience one, which is I, I, crowd I, pleaser. I think that, that fits. Yeah, crowd pleaser indeed. Uh, but that means point to me. There we go. Okay. Next is Space Jam, A New Legacy. Uh, I oh, estimated man. a 37. Which again, <laughs> I think this was the lowest score that I asked. No, no, no. My lo- Out of the movies that we are talking about that actually came out that we get to see the final result of, this was my lowest score. 37. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I also thought this one was going to be pretty bad this is one of those things of like we tried not to do the same score i gave this a 38 uh (laughs) melissa i watched half of this movie i stopped halfway in because it was just so bad uh (laughs) this movie really is not good i Um, i did watch all of it but i did that because i have a podcast about (laughs) saturday morning cartoons and I don't like when that a streaming service reminds me that I have an incomplete status bar. So <laughs> if sense. it wasn't for those factors, I may not have finished it also. Speaking of which, my Netflix won't uh, get rid of the movie Stowaway on ah! my thing. We, we watched it. I've watched it all the way th- 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 through, but it still keeps it in my continue watching. And it's always like like 10, 15 minutes before the end of the film there. And it's just like, I've already seen this. And I've like watched it again to be like, all right, Netflix, I'm done with this. Take it away. And just nope, stuck. No, Netflix wants you to keep thinking about that movie. Keep pondering your own your own mortality and the moral choices you would make in their shoots in their space. The movie. The movie Stowaway is itself a stowaway on my continued <laughs> war watching list. That's Anyways, the trick. Space Jam. Melissa, you said 37. I said 38. Rotten Tomato and Meter, we got a 25. 25. Wow. 25. So that is point to Melissa. Yes. On that one, but barely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not much of a victory. Uh, the next movie is The Suicide Squad. Yeah. Uh, definitely a big improvement from Suicide Squad. Lots the, of uh, fun. The hot topic, the movie. That one was bad. Uh, but yeah, this one was a big improvement uh, on that, I had a blast watching this. Definitely one of DC's best movies. Yeah. I said this one was going to be a 92. Alyssa. I said 87. I, 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 had, I felt very positively about it. I just wasn't sure yeah. how a critic would react. That is true. Uh, let's pull it up and see what the consensus is. The consensus is 90. So this one wow. was also very close because that's I'm like happy to hear right it got 90. Yeah. I knew it was going to be good, but I, I thought it would be good in such an an odd way that I don't know if somebody who wasn't familiar with the genre trappings would score it the way we did. 90. Uh, yeah, which this is one of the interesting ones. I, f- I thought this was probably going to be well i mean it's close between the tomato meter and the audience score which is in 82 but that's the thing they scored it lower than the critics which is interesting yeah that doesn't happen as much like it would be the opposite way or at least like real close but there you go um okay Oh, um, are we doing these in the order we originally wrote them down? Or are we doing them in... 
No, wait, no, it's still Dune. Dune's still next, right? Dune's next. Yeah. Dune. Okay. Dune is the next one. This uh, is my Timothy biggest Chalamet, regret. Oscar I Isaac. gave Dune an 87. And in hindsight, I'm like, you fool. <laughs> what was that about? You saw the trailer. You saw the pretty sand. All those yeah. dunes. The titular yeah. dunes, all the stunning actors, you thought in 87? What did you think, I, Kyle? I thought in 89, which is oh, not okay. so much we're, different from you. We were about, we're about the same. We're in similar boats. Yeah. We're in similar, like, um, oh, they don't have boats. What were they, they don't have those helicopter dragonfly things they used to yeah. fly around. We're in a similar one of those with each other. What? Yeah, looking back, because I saw this film, I loved it. I Very thought impressive. this was pretty good. I, it's one of those weird things that, like, personally, I, I loved it. Like, my audience score would be, like, 95. But if I'm looking at it critically, I probably would actually about have it where I have it right now. Mm. Um. It's very good, but there are some issues that I think hold it, it back. But Dune got a... Ooh, an 83 on the tomato meter. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I thought it would have and been higher. From just for how many people score. I've heard say, Dune, Dune good. Yeah. That is point Even people Melissa. I've heard from who weren't super invested in the story were like, a technical achievement. <laughs> what a Absolutely. marvel of sight and sound. It's beautiful. Beautiful film. Good stuff. Okay. Go watch Dune. It is very, very good. Uh, but next up, Halloween Kills. I am not super familiar with this one. Was going to be like, well, it's kind of one of those like newer remake the reboot goals the sequel thing yes whatever uh you're you're correct this is a sequel to a re reboot cool okay so it's a so it's a reboot cool once removed it's a see reboot cool <laughs> see reboot cool <laughs> this is a new medication uh, a very fast talking woman is going to tell us that if we experience an erection lasting more than four hours under Cerebucal, we need to call an ambulance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. OK. Uh, Halloween kills. I said this one was going to be a 76. And Melissa, what did you I said say? 78. I like the first one. I like the uh, tw Halloween 2018. OK. Cool. I am pulling it up on Rotten Tomatoes. And this one got. Ooh, this one got a 41 on Quality. the tomato meter with a 66 for the audience score. I, I have heard I've heard mixed and middling things about it. I'm still curious to check it out. I. I don't know where it can be viewed now. I know it was on Peacock for the Halloween season. I don't know if it's still there or if it went into a vault. Interesting. <laughs> until the official home media release. Yeah. Um, moving on, though. Eternals. This, this is, is our, our last, last one. last one. Yeah. Then we have our miscellaneous predictions. Uh, so Eternals, I gave this one in 88. That's what I thought it was going to be. And Melissa, what did you give it? I gave it a 92. It looked, it looked uh, like a high performer to me. Yeah. Um, it looked different is the thing. Like it, it looked different from the rest of the Marvel films. And now that I've seen it, I would it agree. Is. Very Different. Different from the rest of the Marvel films. Let's pull this one up. Internals got a ooh a forty eight on the tomato oh. meter, uh, with an audience score of seventy eight. But at least it was fairly solid for uh, mm. normal Joe schmoes who don't need long scenes about sipping or uh, sitting around sipping tea and discussing like the sipping, meaning of life here you know 
would <laughs> mead that you ferment in your mouth or whatever it is they drink <laughs> in this movie. I don't remember anymore. Good movie. I, di- I did like it. I got more out of Eternals than a lot of other people did. Okay, so tallying up our scores, I have... I have eight uh, wins, and you have... I have nine, Melissa. Hey, so hey. I pulled out by one on that you one. You did! Way to go! <laughs> All right. Now, we do have some... Now, our miscellaneous predictions. Please remind yes. me, do these count towards these, or were these just bonus tiebreakers? I think these are... Ju- I, I will... Ooh, I don't know. Uh, I thought these were more just for fun. Okay. Bonus tiebreaker category. That's fine. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if we actually, like, put them for tiebreaker stuff either is the thing. I don't remember, though. I don't know if it'll make that much of a difference. Let's go over our miscellaneous uh, predictions from last year. At the beginning of 2020, I made a list of movies that were supposed to come out that year that I thought I would cry at. Uh, I did not cry at Scoob or Artemis Fowl. Uh, We talked about that last time. Um, Now we get to add uh, Black Widow, Wonder Woman, and Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is uh, not applicable. Haven't seen it yet. Don't know my chances. Didn't cry at Wonder Woman. I did cry a little bit at Black Widow. there's a scene at the beginning of the movie where young Yelena, or she wants to hear her favorite song on the car stereo, and it's American Pie by Don McLean. And later in the movie, Red Guardian sings that to her. And I thought that was very sweet, especially because that's a mm-hmm. song I liked listening to with my dad when I was a kid. I related oh, to it perfect. a lot, so. A teary moment from Black Widow. One. Let's see. Go. Some of my other miscellaneous predictions. Um, the Suicide Squad will nod to a failed DC movie of the past beyond Suicide Squad itself. I was expecting, I was wondering if the movie would have like a bat nipples or a bat credit card or something like that. And I don't remember any Easter eggs like that. It didn't get quite that meta with DC remember. movie history. Yeah. Oh, and um, you read some of yours while I uh, check some stats. Okay, sure. Yeah, so uh, my predictions, I had three predictions. No, I I had uh, four of them, but one of them was about Morbius. So that one got the boot. Yes. Um, So I have three that we can actually talk about. Uh, My first prediction was uh, the best reviewed movie. Um, yes, what was I yours? I thought the, the best reviewed movie would be Dune. Oh, um, and I thought it would be No Time to Die. And looking at the results, the answer is actually Soul. Yeah, so neither and, uh, of us got and, that one. And and in his second place after Soul, Shang Chi, followed Shang-Chi. by uh, Too Quiet, Too Place, and The Suicide Squad. Excellent showing. Good for them. Good for them. Uh, speaking of Shang-Chi, I said that Shang-Chi will have the best post credit sequence of the three Marvel films that came out this, this year. This is a tough I will, one. I will say that I think it has the funniest post credit sequence. It has the funniest. And I think if you are a fan of the traditional Marvel stuff that we've gotten so yeah. far, this is absolutely the, 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 the best one. For someone like me, who's maybe a little more into the comics and knows our, our, is more familiar with some of these characters, I think the best one, I, I think Eternals could also have yeah. a, a run for that one of uh, some of the characters that were in that one there or yeah. some of the ca- characters that spoke in that in, in that one. Oh, like, yes. Oh, the this dialogue. is cool. What's the happening spoke here? The dialogue. Yeah. Big, big implications in Eternals. It has more plot relevance. But uh, the, 
the I, I won't say what it is. I want to try and talk about some of these while avoiding real spoilers. But the post credit scene for Shang Chi is like the bow at the end of a running bit that you didn't think was going to run that far. It's yep. real delightful. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and last but not least, uh, I had to do some research for this one. Uh, uh-huh. I said that King Ghidorah would be mentioned in Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, now, I have not seen Godzilla vs. Kong, which is why I had to go do the research there. Uh, and I guess spoilers for King or for uh, Godzilla mm. vs. Kong. Um I'll give you a second to skip ahead like a minute or so, or so here. Uh, I, I, it seems like he is mentioned. It doesn't seem like he physically appears, and it implies that it's King Ghidorah that takes over the consciousness of Mecha Godzilla at one point. Ah. Found the- <laughs> there, but... That's all I know. So, yeah, I mean, it's it seems like he he is an entity that exists, right? Like he like it is it, it he he is a thing. Yeah, I'd give you that. Uh, going back to some of our original first uh, first episode beginning of 2020 predictions, there's a couple more to follow through on. I predicted that Black Widow would uh, the framing device would be Natasha telling the story of her life to Gamora inside the Soul Stone. Not a real serious prediction. Uh, I'm gonna tell you that didn't happen. Nope. Um. Uh. The I I discount anything that we talked about. Like this movie will gross more than this other movie because that's out the window now. We weren't planning on so many home releases and 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 decimated theater markets. You predicted uh, that in no time to die, Bond would die, and Rami Malek would be oh, playing yeah, the ones. new Doctor No. Um. And without revealing too much, I'll say you were half right. Yeah. Yeah. Not a full point on that one. Uh, you also, um, you said Venom 2 would make a billion dollars worldwide or would at least outperform Venom 1. Uh, did neither. I don't, th- it, I don't think it could have outperformed Venom 1 with the smaller theater market. That was like a wild this year. outlandish one. I was like, right. what if it does? Like, like <laughs> what if Venom, Venom 2 makes a billion, a billion dollars? dollars. <laughs> uh, you also wondered if Spiral would have a sequel or spinoff announced before the end of the year. I haven't heard anything Probably more not. about that. So yeah, it could happen, but won't ha- it has not happened. Um, uh, I said in either Morbius or Venom 2, let there be carnage. We will meet a new member of the Sinister Six, somebody who has not been teased before, somebody who's brand new whole cloth. I don't think we necessarily did in Venom 2, Morbius, we've yet to see. And I started doing a prediction every year for a song that would be played in a movie over the upcoming year. Uh, my initial guess was Man Eater by Hall and Oates. I thought, yep. you know, maybe this is in. Uh, Cruella, maybe this is in Wonder Woman 1984. Maybe this is in Halloween Kills. I haven't seen Halloween Kills. I have not definitively proven that this song does not appear in any of the movies on the list. Maybe this is in Spiral from the Book of Saw. I have no idea what that movie contains. But in everything I watched, no man eater. Okay, that closes up all of our old business, and it's time to move on to new business. Yeah. Okay, so starting out the new business, I'm actually going to pull this up on screen so y'all can see this one here. Yeah, we're talking Uh, about the rest of the month of December 2020, uh, 2021. And then um, all of the movies of 2022, as they have released dates right now, up through the last one we have on our list is mid-November. That's where it's slated for right now. Yep. Uh, so there were a few that got bumped from last year into this year. So That's I'm right. going to yes. read those off. Uh, the first one we got is The King's Man, which is uh, now scheduled to be out December 22nd. So th- that'll be out very soon here. Um, mm-hmm. Originally, I predicted an 81. 
And Melissa, you... you predicted a 70. Do you want to revise yeah. your stuff? Oh, did I? Yes, I revised mine to a 66. I did tweak some of my scores. Now that we had extra movies thrown in here and I was looking at some of them in context with the list of other movies and thinking like, well, how is the King's Man going to do in regards in, con in juxtaposition against Sonic 2? Now I've got like all these new movies added in that really have nothing to do with each other. But I look at the list and I'm like, I can't rate this thing, this thing. I've got something <laughs> else around there. So I moved some things. Kingsman okay. 66. Okay. Uh, next up after that, I'll, I'll just to, to clarify, uh, I'm keeping mine at in 81 for Kingsman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Morbius is the next one, which Morb. is supposed to be out January 20th. I'm 20. giving that one a 78. Is it tw on the 22nd? Two for that one? Two? I have 28th, but I might have 28th. typed that wrong. Into January. You'll see them. He'll be the yeah. only vampire in theaters. Uh, unless the new Hotel and... Transylvania movie comes out at that time. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I gave that one a 78. You gave that one a 72. Again, I, I nudged it down a yours. bit to 60. I liked the look of the trailer. I will see this movie. I very well may enjoy it. But I, I, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, I don't know if there's anything in here that has proven to me this will be a critical pleaser. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm I'm going to bump mine down to a 64. I'm still going to okay. be a little bit higher than you because, because as much as I don't like Jared Leto, he's a really good actor. Like he, he does have a phenomenal, a strong uh, track record of, of being complimented on his professional skills. Yes. Well, well professional skills, maybe not, but. Acting, yes, skills, acting for ability, for yes. sure. Yeah, yeah. He's competent uh, at the jobs he is hired to do. You can say that about him. There you go. Uh, after that, we got Death on the Nile, which is now yeah. supposed to be out February 11th. Uh, I gave that a, se se a 75. And Melissa, you gave that uh, one a 41. I, I, I think I might have been... A, a, too harsh more hesitant on that one than perhaps i needed to i nudged it up to a 67 again thinking about things in context death on the nile will probably be one point better than the king's man okay okay uh i i i think murder on the orient express was good enough that i think they have yeah. a foundation to build off of and the pandemic I, I don't know how far along they were exactly. Don't know. I, I yeah. Think it, so I, I don't know if that gave them a chance to rethink some things or reshoot some things or do a little bit more post production or something. I, I think I might stick it still at 75. That would be nice. Um, I look forward to a 75 percent death on the Nile. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Uncharted. I also gave this one a 75. You gave this one a 63. What? I wrote down 61. Maybe because I had too many other threes on here. Okay. 61. To keep it at 61. I watched... Um, you guys did a reactor core reaction to this trailer. I wasn't there. I don't know anything about these. I know the guy's name is Nathan, and that's the end of my facts. But you and Gino and Alan reacted to this trailer, so I got to see it through your eyes. It seems like a, a perfectly fine action-adventure movie. It's got sand, it's got sea. I think I'm going to bump this one down to a 50. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Is that in regards to the one? trailer that you saw earlier? Yes and no. Like, I'm, I'm ex like I, I think just more information has come out about this film, mm. where... The trailer I was actually OK with. I didn't think it was a great one, but I was like, OK, not bad, uh, actually. Uh, but there's also been interviews where Tom Holland has said he 
was not proud of his performance. He fo- phoned mm. it in uh, as well as uh, that Uncharted broke him. I don't know what that means exactly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just it's video game movies ultimately really don't do well. Um, so well, I don't know. And we've already seen Indiana Jones, which is kind of what this is. So yeah. I don't know if it they're, they're if the like the the shadow of Indiana Jones is, I think, the shadow of that hat. Yeah, right. Nathan Drake, he doesn't looming. have a hat. No, he does People not. People won't like him. He's hatless. Um, OK, next one's I we think got next here. is Top, Top Gun, Gun Maverick, yep. which is moved to May Maverick. 27th. Uh, I for a movie that I've known has been on the horizon for so long, there's a lot of these movies where I only know it as a theoretical concept. I know zero things about Top Gun Maverick, except for like Tom's back, Val's back, planes, etc. Uh, I have this where I had it last time, uh, 79. Mavericks, guns, tops. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you had this one at a 79. I said this one was not going to do too well. I said a 62. I think I'm set there. 62. Yeah. I, will, I saw Top Gun once. It's a great movie to look at, like beautifully shot. Just landscapes, just vistas. Sure. I think it'll be a nice treat for your eyes. Sure. Um, after that, we got Jurassic World Dominion. Mm. I said this one was going to be a 54. And Melissa, you put this one at a 44. Uh, 44. Yeah. You don't know what's in store for there? this one. I think so. Okay. And I think that is all for now of the ones that got bumped. Let me go back up to the top here. All right. That was um, everything. Checking in on stuff we predicted before. From here on out, new movies never predicted before. Initial predictions. Spider-Man No Way Home. It's our first one. (sighs) Out on the 17th. Oh, boy. What a way to start. I haven't even bought tickets. I have all my tickets. Uh, apparently a bunch of the like websites and all that stuff went down at at midnight when they went on sale and stuff like See, that. I bought my tickets at 7 a.m. Uh, when I was able to do it comfortably, but I did go to the biggest theater and a lot oh, of them okay. were sold out. So I, I had to go to the second biggest theater at my Cineplex. Gotcha. Um. I'm I'm going to give the, I think this one's going to be very, very good. I'm going to put this one at a. 92. Nice. Very close. I gave it a 91. I have high hopes for this movie, okay. but it is a lot of. I don't want to say fan service, but it's going to be building on a lot of mythology and emotion important to this character and this storyline that I don't know is going to do as much for somebody who isn't a fan of it. You know, I, I, I would agree with you, but Spider-Man has always been Marvel's most popular character by far. Mm. Spider-Man is basically their mascot worldwide. He is like, He's huge, right? So I, th- I think most people have seen these movies. I think the Marvel movies have gotten to the point where, like, most people have seen them or seen some of them. So I think, I think the general populace is ready for this one. And we'll know it and we'll understand it and all that stuff. And this is a lot of debate over a one point difference. My concern is just like, (laughs) what a fan, the the checklist in a fan's head of things that they want to see is like, I want to see all these different characters in it. And I imagine somebody who's not as invested (laughs) in this narrative as mates might sit down in the movie theater and be like, where'd that guy come from? What's he doing here? (laughs) <laughs> this was really good, but I have no idea who that guy is. <laughs> What's with this guy who's sand? <laughs> uh, okay. 
This next one is one that I actually did not know until you put it on on our list here. I did yeah. not know this movie was a thing. Nightmare Alley. Uh, yes, this comes out December 17th, same day as Spider-Man, busy weekend. This is the latest film from Guillermo del Toro. And <laughs> this is described as an ambitious carny with a talent for manipulating people with a few well-chosen words hooks up with a female psychiatrist who is even more dangerous than he is. I think this is a, um, uh, a, maybe a bit of a psychological thriller. I was listening to a podcast interview with Guillermo del Toro just today, and he's like, this is maybe the darkest thing I've done, but also one of the most visually intricate things I've done. Uh, it's yeah. got this sort of carnival backdrop to it. This mm -hmm. this looks promising, and I wanted to make sure we threw in a couple non franchise movies into this no, list. No good. So like let's good, yeah. let's throw in something with a bit of prestige in it, like the follow up from a director of an Oscar winning film, Nightmare Alley. I I gave it a ninety five. That's my estimation. 95. It looks promising. I watched uh, this trailer to be like, what yeah. is Nightmare Alley? This looks good. Holy shit, that looks yeah. awesome. Uh, I'm 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 going to go real close on this one, too. I'm going to say 93. 93. What was yours? 93. 93. OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had not heard about that one. It looks kind of like the prestige or the illusionist uh like that kind of thing but it's about a guy uh who can read minds but it looks like he's scamming people but maybe he isn't but maybe he is but who knows uh it, is he being bit. scammed yeah. who will scam the scammer somehow uh very twisty uh, yeah and next up we got the matrix resurrections december 22nd I think this one. Critics are going to go after this one hard because uh, the, the first Matrix is so fucking good. Uh, mm. And it it was it was like everyone owned this because this was the movie that you got when you got a DVD player like it was sold <laughs> with DVD players. So everyone yeah. had this and everyone has watched it. So we've all like kind of continued with this franchise. But that first one especially is so, so good. And the Wachowskis are just huge cinema b b b buffs. Like I was l listening to a podcast ca cast on this because right now all of the like movie podcasts yeah. are like, what if we re-review all of these for the next three weeks right before this new one? Um, it's speed racer season, everybody. Get your helmet on. Yes. And yeah, they just there, there's so much good stuff that they do in this film that is just so subtle that you don't, 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 don't even think about or don't realize. I think it's going to review really well, but I think critics are going to be harsh. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm 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 going to go more with uh, in 84. Uh, I know very little about the matrix it's a big blind spot for me so i gave it a, a mild 73 Ooh, okay what well, i have no i have no context i don't no, know i don't know how they have been 73 sounded fair that's absolutely fair indeed our um, next movie this is another yeah. um as far as i know this is original it maybe maybe it's some video game or graphic novel i don't know it was a something i never heard all. of I saw this trailer when I went to see Eternals and I could not stop laughing. This is the goofiest premise for a movie <laughs> I've seen in a while. This is called uh, coming out February 4th Moonfall. This is a disaster movie from director Roland Emmerich about the moon and it falls, falls to earth. earth. That's yeah. that's the disaster. Can we escape moon? What will we do when moon comes to us? <laughs> Uh, this I mean, in a weird way, maybe it is based off of a video game. The uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. There right, is a moon, moon there. that is like falling to the <laughs> But no. Yeah, this is 
it, it has the look of like a really, really intense sci-fi film. So it has that niche. Like it's so sci-fi that it's yes. niche, but then it's also a disaster yeah, film here. And uh, yeah, <laughs> disaster films are always kind of cheesy. They're they're all just a little bit shellacky. Sh- 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 um but yeah, they have this one funny line when they go. I, I I don't even remember exactly what he says, but they go like in the dark side of the moon and they go in the crater and they're like, we're on the moon. And they are like, no, we're inside the moon. And he's like, I can't believe you actually just said that sentence or something like that. It's like that sentence exists. You said it. Uh, and I was just like, this is dumb. <laughs> I love it. It's dumb. Right. <laughs> It it is it does. Uh, I I I will prob. I don't know if I will see. I don't. I probably won't make a point of seeing Moonfall. But at some point in my life, I will see Moonfall because I love a a real <laughs> okay. big over the top disaster movie. I have a soft spot for the '90s Godzilla for some inexplicable reason. Uh, I give Moonfall a twenty. Twenty. Wow. Okay. But that's I was... that's a fun twenty. That's a twenty with a party hat on. I yeah, uh, I was going to give this one a 34. OK. I mean, we've got Halle Berry in there, Oscar winning actress Halle Berry. Yeah. Patrick Wilson's in it. He's good. Who else is in this? Michael Pena, Donald Sutherland, the yeah. moon itself in a starring role. Moon. Starring Luna. <laughs> Um, okay, next up, The Batman on March 4th. Yeah. I think I don't know. I like to to be honest, I'm kind of mixed on this one cuz I like the darker tone. Mm. Of this, I like the look of the film. I don't know how well it's going to do critically. Yeah. I'm I'm probably I'm probably going to put this one. I'm going to go 79. OK. I had this um, at an 80. But as you were saying that, I was like, I think I could nudge it up slightly. I'm going to give it an 83. I, okay. I I'm excited for the Batman. I think this looks pretty cool. Oh, same here. But yeah, yeah, it's this it's another awesome. movie where. I think it's going to be a real treat for people who are into the genre and for the average yep. viewer. I don't know how it's going to perform for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. That's the Batman. Moving on then. Turning Red. March yes. 11th. Uh, what do you know about this one? Because I, I had to look this up and I, I didn't. I was not familiar. Uh, This is a a name we came across in that big Disney Plus news day at like the end of 2020. You remember when we were here for like three hours talking about all that Disney news? Uh, This is the new Pixar movie. I remember the name, but I I, I don't really know what it's about is the thing. This is about uh, a young girl who uh, learns that when she gets upset or excited or just has these like big feelings that she has sort of a family curse that she will turn into a giant red panda and it's just about her i guess learning to manage her feelings uh or 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 feel her feelings feel them big be a red panda i watched the trailer for this and as soon as she turns into it like her parents are there they see and they're like oh we didn't think this would happen to you so soon yeah our family does this you're a red panda now uh try 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 and keep it quiet and she's like, OK. And then she's like, well, what if I don't want to keep it quiet? What if I want to be a large, big animal? <laughs> uh, what did you give this one? Uh, I gave it a 90. You know, Pixar performs highly and this looks very charming. They do often perform highly. Um, I'm going to go with a. 87. Eighty-seven. Okay. Next up, going from turning red to turning blue, it's Sonic Two. <laughs> Pandas are Coming red. April Sonic 8th. is blue. Out April eighth is Sonic Two. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I, um, I don't know uh, what the I first one this, got. Oh, I don't remember, but I, I, I think it was like on the look. It was like maybe in the 30s or something. I gave this a 45. Okay, 45. I'm going to go lower. I'm, I'm going to say 34. Okay, here we go. Next up, Fantastic Beasts and the Secrets of Dumbledore. April 15th. Okay. Um, I haven't seen any of these Fantastic Beasts. I've heard the first one was pretty good. Yeah, uh, but I saw then the first kinda, one. The, I, I don't know how many of them there are. I don't know if this is the third this, one or the fourth one. This is the third whatever. one, yes. Third one, okay. So I, it, it feels like this series has kind of gotten uh, overshadowed by all the Johnny Depp drama and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but I still haven't seen these. I don't really know anything about them, nor do I really care. I'm going to go 70. Oh, I gave it a 32. Uh, Ooh, I think okay. the first Fantastic Beast movie performed decently. I saw it. I liked it fine. Uh, the second one, I think people did not regard as well. I don't know a lot about it. I know I Jude gotcha. Law was playing a young Dumbledore, and I think that's decent casting. I would like to see him do that. Yeah, I, I guess he'll be back for this one. Mads Mikkelsen is now here as Grindelwald. Those would be an interesting cool. pair. So oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll go back and watch the second one if I hear if it seems like this third one as I learn more about it really piques my interest. Perfect. Uh, Doctor Strange two May sixth. Multiverse of madness, and I abbreviate. <laughs> <laughs> I do abbreviate it here on my spreadsheet as Doctor Strange M O M. So it's like I'm Mom. screaming at my mother. Yep. Mom. Uh, Doctor Strange. Multiverse Mom! of madness. I'm gonna give this one. A high 70. I'm going to go 78. Uh, I gave it an 85. I, I know this is exciting Five. to an MCU fan that it's going to broaden the horizons. Yes. And I think it may do something like Same that for, for a critical audience, too. If it's really not leaning as hard into the horror as I know Scott Derrickson originally wanted to do. Um, but I think Sam Raimi is still going to bring an element of, of horror and darkness that is still different than what has been in the MCU in the past. And I, I think that would be appreciated. Yeah. It will be interesting indeed. Uh, John Wick 4, May 27th. Will more puppies get killed? Who knows? Will John Wick shoot a bunch of people? Probably. Um, I, I know these ones have... Definitely been fan favorites. I don't know yeah. how they review critically. Uh, Same. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this one up pretty high. I'm going to say this one's a 94. I, I'm in the same boat. Like, I know people love John Wick, but I don't know. I, I don't know enough to estimate the numbers of it. So I had it at 83. 83. Just there no we insult go. to it. I truly just don't yeah. know where the, where the thing would score. I don't know anything about it. I, I, another quirk about this is that we're judging movies that are just like two, three, and four, and five, six, seven that will probably get subtitles by the end of the year when they actually come out. But we don't yeah. have them yet. He's just four. Yeah. John Wick is four years old. Uh, to infinity and beyond, Lightyear is next, June 17th. I I think this one is going to do pretty darn well. I'm going to give this whoops. Uh I'm going to give this one a 96. Oh wow. Very high. I mm -hmm. gave it an 89. I also think so, I I think it looks very good. But I I wonder if there may be people out there who're saying this is fine. Why did we need this again? Where did this come from? Why is this premise part of it? It, Look, it looks good, I but I also can imagine it Toy just Story like 3. mystifying people. Yeah. I was the same way with Toy Story 3. I was the same way with Toy Story 4. And it's especially on Toy Story 4. I was like, why do we need this? And I walked away from that one being like, that was really good. 
I loved that. That was awesome. Yes. Um, I, I did really like Toy Stories 3 and 4. Uh, I just have reservations. I'm sure I will like Lightyear. I like a space travel story. I like both sci-fi and tales it's, of just it's so astronauts. Different though is the, the it is thing it's, that we I don't know what to expect. Which is why I this. Which is why I scored it a you know a little bit more conservatively at 89, the disastrously low score of 89. I think this will surprise us though. I think absolutely will surprise Maybe us. Maybe this will be like a Dune for me, like a big regret. But then again, looking Maybe. at Dune, I, uh, knows, yeah. I thought I underestimated it, and it, it, I thought I underestimated it, and I actually overestimated it. We'll see. I have the highest hopes for all of these films, even down to Little Moonfall. She's got high hopes. Uh, let's move on to Thor, Love, and Thunder, July 8th. That's when that one is coming out. I think this one's also going to be very, 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 very good. I'm going to say critically, it gets a 90. I, I have it at 84. Again, okay. there's a lot of these movies that I know are fan favorites that perform well, that people like, That's but I tr- don't true. know them numerically. That's true. I'll true probably come indeed. out of there being like, it had both love and thunder. I was delighted. And Thor, don't forget him. <laughs> He's part of it. The main part. Um, moving on. Nope. Nope. Which is the next movie from Jordan Peele. Uh, that's out July 22nd. I don't know anything yeah. about this. Movie. I know there. I know like three actors that are in it and the movie poster, which is like a dark stormy night sky. And there's like an ominous storm cloud uh, with like a kite tail coming out of it. So you don't know if it's like, Dang. is this a sentient cloud? Is somebody piloting this cloud? Is this like a, a weather disaster horror tale? Really don't know nothing, but it seems promising. The work has been promising thus far. I, I estimate nope at a 90. Uh, it's only, I may have gone higher, but there's truly like so little to go off of. <laughs> right. I don't know what the premise might be. I'm going to go... 86 on that one. The premise is cloud. It's got Stephen Young and a cloud. So, which sounds like a great team up to me. Yep. <laughs> what was your number again? 86 is what I said okay. for that one. And then Next, moving on, Black Adam. Back to superheroes. Yes. Black July Adam. 29th is when that one is co- coming out. Um, I don't know about the. This is one of those odd ones that The Rock has been championing, championing for so long mm. um, that I, I'm really interested to see it. I like when these actors get behind a project like that yes. and just don't g- 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 give up. It usually ends up doing pretty well. Not necessarily gr- great but it is like there is at least that passion behind it which i think then shows through the film if that makes mm. sense so we'll see i'm 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 gonna put this one at uh 78 oh i i scored this one on the lower side uh not because of any personal hesitations i have beyond just i'm not familiar with the character I know he's in the Shazam world, but I don't know how this is going to connect to Shazam. If we're going to see any of the characters we saw in the first movie, what the tone's going to be. I just know so little and I don't know how it would play for people. I gave it a 48, which is not respect, you know, does not represent my own feelings about Mr. Black Adam, sir. That's that's the thing. I think you're not wrong with that. Like it could be that bad. It could could be like at the most like where i put it at and who knows it might be best movie that dc's ever made oh my god who knows but yeah i I just feel like it's go going to be one of the what we said <laughs> if that makes sense i think it's exciting like there was we you know spider-man no way home we have a one point difference for this we have a 40 point difference we got to vary it up Sometimes yep. you just got to take a bold swing for the excitement of the numbers. 
Uh, Mission Impossible 7, September 30th. Another movie that, like, certainly will have a subtitle, and we just don't know it yet. Mm-hmm. You can't have one, two, three, then three subtitles, and then back to seven. It doesn't work like that. I don't know anything about this. Um, Mission Impossible Fallout was very impressive. I had a great time. And even Absolutely. before I... And I was seeing the trailer in theaters um, without having seen any of the Mission Impossible movies before that, just the trailer for Fallout, knowing nothing about Mission Impossible. And I'm like, this is a great trailer. I love watching this trailer over and over again at every movie I go to. I've, uh, now I want to get into the Mission Impossible movies, but we don't have a trailer yet. Like, we don't have anything to go off of. So that's why I'm also uh, scoring this as a, at a slightly conservative 89 again. Okay. I've got, uh, this is a, a very competent, just solid performing franchise. Always very fun. Excellent on a technical level. It's got some heart to it. Uh, I just don't know. I'm just contextless. I'm just floating alone in a sea. I'm going to go 86. Because, okay. yeah, I, I know this movie is going to be good. I think it's going to be hard to follow Fallout up. Uh, that one was so good. And yeah. Tom Cruise is only getting older. Uh, I mean, he's still doing all sorts of stuff, but it, like, it, I, I don't know, man. One of these has to like not do well <laughs> sometime. Uh, but after that, we By got not Spider Man well, into the Spider Verse we mean 86. Two. <laughs> right, These yeah. are all relative to each other. Yes, yeah, yeah. Spider Verse 2. I, yeah. in the interest of fairness, I gave this the same estimated score I gave Spider Man No Way Home, which is 91. Okay. Um, Peter and Miles get the same number. I. I think I'm going to put this higher than I did Spider-Man No Way Home. I think I'm going to put it at 93 on that one. Just barely. Um, Halloween ends October mm. 14th. Um, what did that old, what did the Halloween kills get again? Let's see up there. A 41. Halloween kills. 41. Oof, man. Okay, let me go back down here so everyone can see. Um, ends. Hmm. I'm gonna go. You know, I'm 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 gonna go 48. I think it'll be better because it's the end of this trilogy, right? They're they're wrapping it up. All, the, mm. all that stuff we think um middle chapter yeah, middle chapters are awkward yeah yeah i er originally had like a thing. i think a 58 after seeing that 41 i think i will nudge it down a little bit it is unusual that we get a direct sequel the year after the preceding film this isn't always context we're going to have having the previous yep. number immediately right there in front of us but now that i look at my scores again in context with each other it's like so do i think do I think this is going to be better than Sonic 2? Do I think this is going to be better than Jurassic I put Sonic 2 higher than Jurassic World Dominion, and I don't know if that's how that's going to shake out. <laughs> I'm going to put I'm going to put Halloween ends at a straight down the middle 50. This will be the most oh, wow, average okay. movie of 2022. I put it as a 50. I put Uncharted as a 50. <laughs> That was another one I wanted to have. I wanted to see what would happen if I put one directly as a 50 in the middle. That was something else I yeah. was considering. Like, not a great track record for video game movies, but it's just a, a treasure hunt adventure that's easy enough to have fun with. Yep. Uh, the Flash, November 4th. I think I'm going to put this one at a... I think critically... It's going to be like a 74. I gave it an 82. I think the Flash is a character that charms people. Um, 
I think the 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 time travel and multiversal antics like won't completely bog down the movie or like go over people's heads, but I think it may be a lot more than what um a pedestrian viewer may be in for. Yeah. 82. Especially as the first movie for the Flash. I know he's been in Judge Justice League and Batman v Superman for that one scene there. I just, uh, this movie has been plagued for so long in production hell uh that i just i i really don't think they really know what to do with it or that idea they had is a good idea if there maybe already was a flash trilogy that existed or just Mm. a stronger dc universe what i don't know so uh, we'll I may have scored this lower before we read Flashpoint on the review show recently. Okay. Flashpoint okay. is a, which I know is loosely inspiring this movie. That is a book with a strong emotional core to it. And that could yes. pay off. Indeed. Uh, last but Finally. not least. Yeah. Black Panther 2. Wakanda forever. Yeah. Um, Currently sitting at November 11th. 2022 yeah this is a tough one because Chadwick Boseman is no longer here with us Mm. so they have a giant obstacle of just how are you gonna do this movie which then reads to me as like I I don't know if critically like that it's gonna do well because of that like can they get over this obstacle but it's also Black Panther. I think it's going to do pretty well still, at least financially. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with a low 80. I'm going to do like a uh, the 82. I, I gave it a 93. I think this will be a, a difficult movie to... This will be a difficult story to tell, both within the narrative yep. itself and outside of the narrative. I, it'll be difficult to tone appropriately where you go to the movie and you have a good time and you, you feel sad enough, but not too sad. I, I, I hope we walk away feeling triumphant. I would like to feel that way too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I, I believe in, in Ryan Coogler and the, the emotional circumstances surrounding this movie, that this could be a, a, a very strong, passionate expression. Absolutely. We'll, we'll say 93. Um, okay. That, those were all the movies we did predictions for. Uh, Melissa, do we want to start typing down our predictions? Are like yeah. miscellaneous predictions here. Yes, I've got. Um, in addition to my needle drop, I've got five other miscellaneous predictions. Okay. Let's see here. Go for it. Uh, my predicted needle drop. I thought about this a lot. Um, I ended up basing it on what I know may be happening in these upcoming MCU titles. My predicted needle drop is. Sweet dreams are made of these by the Eurythmics. Okay. I could see this coming up in the 80s um, flavor of Spider-Man No Way Home, a movie about uh, encountering different realms. I think this is a realms sounding song. It's got a little bit of trippiness to it. We definitely see it in Multiverse of Madness. I think the sense of it would fit right into Love and Thunder. Who knows? That's is my know guess. It could show up anywhere. Huh? I tried um, my best. That's okay. <laughs> I don't know how to spell it off the top of my head either. Uh, uh, are, are you specifying that it will be in a Marvel film or are you? Oh, no, no. Just I'm just saying that's where my. That's where my inspiration movies. came from when naming this song. I, I'm putting down Sweet Dreams. And when I pick, when I nominate these needle drops, I'm not saying it will be explicitly okay. the version we're familiar with. It could be That's a fine. cover, could be an instrumental version. Even if like in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange is like, 
he talks to Wanda, who's lost her children. And he's like, Wanda, sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to disagree? I travel the world in the seven seas. And everybody's looking Everybody, for something. Everybody's looking for something. <laughs> everybody's looking for something, Wanda. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, continuing with a little bit of Marvel predictions. I don't okay. want to... When I say this, uh, this is a, a hope. I don't want to say what it's based on. I think Toby and Andrew will be in No Way Home. Yep. Uh, I, I think odds are good. I want to yeah, say that in I, addition I so to this, too. since there's been so much fervor about this, I think Into the Spider-Verse 2 will also have a voice from a live-action Spider-Man alum. Oh, okay. To some actor who we know from being in one of the live action Spider Man movies. Could be anyone from Kirsten Dunst to Octavia Spencer reprising her role as woman at check in desk for Amateur Wrestling League. Anybody could have a little voice thrown into Spider Verse 2. I predict mm. that in Jurassic World Dominion, now that dinosaurs are roaming the mainland, roaming human civilization, they're going to attack another Margaritaville. Uh, the legendary scene from Jurassic World, Jurassic World, the first one, uh, where the dinosaurs attack Jurassic World, the theme park, and they attack that Margaritaville. And Jimmy Buffett himself runs out screaming, holding two large margaritas. It's the highlight of the film, and I think they would pay really homage is, to yeah. that. Now that now that dinosaurs are back in civilization, they can find another Margaritaville. I think that Mission Impossible 7 will involve some sort of futuristic travel. This Ooh, could be okay. like a maglev train, a self-driving car, space, anything that takes you to space. Okay, that's a good one. And finally... Like I think The Batman may be the highest scoring movie to feature Batman since The Dark Knight Rises. So I'm saying that it will outscore Batman v Superman and Justice. Uh, so what will out uh, will be the highest scoring bit, like purely Batman N film? No, just highest scoring since The Dark Knight Rises. Okay. Which encompasses two other Batman movies. So, well, no, 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 no. Let me let me specify. I should be specific because I forgot about Lego Batman, and that movie's delightful. So, just say the Batman will score better than Robert Pattinson's going to score better th than Ben Affleck. Okay. I'm leaving Lego out of this. Lego isn't involved in this fight. And that's it. Those are mine. We're better than Ben Affleck. Okay, there we go. Written down. Sold. Uh, I'm going to scoot down here to my predictions. What are yours? Uh, I only have four of them. That's okay. I think the best reviewed movie of the year um will be light year i'm 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 putting my chips on light year cuz that was the one that i scored the highest i think at like a 95 uh and uh, I, yeah, you gave I, it a 96 96 you're, yeah so you're big on light year i'm i'm thinking this is going to be a good one melissa you're i got a little space good ranger feeling. yourself i i thank you Thank you, Melissa. I want to be a space <laughs> ranger. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think uh, out of all of the 25 movies uh, that we will get more than eight Oscars. Oh, now are these any sort of Oscar down Anyone, to? Yeah. OK, no. Anything that's in Earth. the main broadcast, even if it's the yeah, ones that are truncated, like, like we gave sound editing to this one. Now on yeah. with the show. OK. Yeah. yeah, there will be more than eight. Um, more than eight Oscars. Uh, that's that's a good I haven't thought about doing ones like that. That's that's a solid bet to make. Uh, so that's number two. Oh, I want to yeah. say I want to sorry. I want to stop you real quick. You said your highest 
you believe the highest reviewed movie will be Lightyear. Uh, mine is Nightmare Alley. And it's both of our beautiful. lowest rated ones were Moonfall. That's reviewed. Wait, are you, are, were, you, were you just saying your, you think the best reviewed will be Moonfall? Or, or no, you say I'm that's saying, the one that you... I was looking at our scores. I think, and my, the score I gave supports this, the highest rated movie will be Nightmare Alley. Okay. I'm saying just looking gotcha. at our numbers, both of us had our lowest scores for Moonfall. Moonfall. I mean, it's a movie about a moon that falls. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, let me, let's see. I'm typing all of this out. The Batman will hint at or mention at least one of these three characters. Um. Mm. Characters. Uh, I have Hugo Strange. Good. I have. Who else do I have here? Thomas Elliot. Who is that? Who is Hush? He is a oh, okay. childhood friend of Bruce Wayne who wants to be him so much so that he gets plastic surgery to look like him. It oh, hit, I didn't hit, know that's what him. Hush did. Uh, he ends up murdering his own parents to be more like Bruce. Uh, and yeah, tries to become Batman, but doesn't like the surgery gets all screwed up and stuff Oof. like that. There it's are times like where he man. like, yeah, like he poses as him and like. They don't know that it's not him. All, all that stuff. Yeah, there's some like creepiness with that. But I That's... think with the like more grounded yeah. take, yeah. Th this is a villain that would fit in with that. Um, yeah. And the last one I was going to mention is Victor Zaz. Oh, they're going for a Vicky Vale. We haven't seen her in a while. Throw a Vicky Vale oh. back in the mix. Who's, you know, who's Victor, Victor Zaz? Dale might actually be a good one. Uh, Victor Zaz was in uh, Birds of Prey. He was the serial killer that hung out with Black Mask there. Uh, he. Oh, OK. For every I kind of remember that this he guy. makes. He makes a scar on his mark. Yes. So he has all of these like uh, like scars and marks on his body there. Um, OK, OK. Finally. And last but not least. I, I said this is similar to what you kind of just said that Moonfall or Death on the Nile uh, will make the least amount of money. Oh, that's like least. Yeah, like least box office. Thing. Those Sometimes those are solid bets. Office. Those are also both winter movies where people may be less likely to go to the theater in February. Yeah. Yep, yep, those are yep. solid bets. Yeah. I there don't know go. if I'd get out to see either of them. Those are my predictions. Best reviewed movie is Lightyear. More than eight Oscars. Uh, Batman will <laughs> not him, himself, but the movie will uh, mention or hint at least one of these characters. Hugo Strange, Hush or Zaz. Uh, Moonfall or Death on the Nile will make the least amount of money at the box office. Those are okay. my predictions. Those, those are all solid predictions. This you come up with very good ones, and I'm like, what if a dinosaur attacked a Margaritaville? I I feel I felt like mine last year and the year before were really bad because I like made them up on the spot of just like, oh God, we're doing this. Okay. Uh I forgot. <laughs> so I was like, let, let me actually think about them this year. We'll see what happens. But yeah. That is our Rotten Tomatoes movie predictions. Uh, it looks like I won for last That's year. Right. So I you get did myself win. a pizza. I get myself I a pizza. I owe you one pizza. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be great. Um, maybe I will cash that in when we do our uh, 
sixth anniversary retrospective and i'll buy a pizza for that and it is fun eat it uh, that's what i did last year with stream. my pizza we yep. do have one final pizza bet that will be resolved next week uh, Maybe on the final episode pizzas will just cancel <laughs> each other <Right>. out <laughs> we each order <laughs> ourselves a pizza and the other exactly. one's honor yeah, on the review show, we've been playing bingo. We made bingo cards with, uh, we picked a bunch of different uh, just pop culture tropes that we thought we may encounter over the year. We randomly generated bingo cards. We've been playing it. Uh, I have several bingos and Kyle has won bingo. And we've got um, uh, two, oh, two things left to cover. And I don't think they're <laughs> going to give you a robot blame for I, murder. I'm not going to win. I, I have one bingo. I'm stuck on one bingo and nothing is giving me anything. <laughs> you got that bingo first before I got any of mine. So I did. I was so happy. I was like, hey, Melissa, you're, you're going down. <laughs> you're a hair. I'm a tortoise. That's how this year worked oh, out. Man. Oh, well, this was good. This was fun. Um, mm. We will be back next week for a regular episode of the Captain's Log. We will be back next year. Our first weekend in December uh, is when we will check back in on our Rotten Tomatoes movie predictions. Mm -hmm. We'll see how we'll see how we all did. See what happened. So with that, we've been recording for a while. Uh, Let's Melissa, get out of here. Let's get out of here. Indeed. Where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. Listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities. This is a show where me and my brother Jams talk about weird old kids shows you feel like only you remember. There you go. And if you guys want to follow me, I'm at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter. Uh, and if you guys want to follow all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. So go like, share, subscribe. No matter what our Rotten Tomatoes movie predictions might be. Uh, that would help Wait. us out to spread the word. Mm. Go do all that and again, stuff. I think positively. I hope everybody is a big, round, ripe red tomato. Or maybe a yellow one like me. <laughs> They're a green tomato. Tomatoes come in different kinds. There's a movie about that. Uh, but yeah, with that, we will see you all next week. We are getting out of here. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God. The clapper. I didn't do the clapper. You can do it quick. And cut. Clap. That's a, that's a wrap on the movie one. <laughs>